All right, we got some more testing with the EG4 6000 XP. I saw some people talking on some forums about these running without batteries, and I have ran it some without a battery, but I'm just wondering how much load it will run and if it'll run in parallel. So what we're gonna do is put it in no battery mode and see if it'll run my house. So first off, I'll start out with, I got part of my house running right now, turn part of it off, because I got a sub panel in part of my house and then my main panel. So I got the sub panel running. I'm gonna start charging my electric car probably before I start the main house. We'll just see how it goes. It's not a perfectly sunny day. It's partly cloudy. So the clouds are kind of coming in and out. So we'll see how much solar we're pulling in right now to see if it's gonna be even possible. All right, so far it looks like we pulled in 32.8 uh, kilowatts. And one inverter is pulling in 4,000 right now. One's pulling in 5,000. And the other one's pulling in 4,600. So we should be able to do this right now. So what we're gonna do is go and change the settings. And I'm guessing it's gonna sh shut off the power and reset the inverter, stuff like that when I go to no battery. But I'll go in here and set all of them to no battery and see what we get. Let's see if you can see this display, that green light is blaring. Looks like to me, I don't know if it's showing that to you. All right, but basically what we're gonna do is hold enter down for three seconds. It'll come in and have your settings pop up and it'll be blinking basically. See how it's showing number one, we'll go up to three. We'll press enter. And instead of lithium, we're gonna go to, where is that? Gonna go to no battery. Let's see what happens, let's see if it cuts the power out. And cut the power off. No power, no power. So we'll change them all. All right, bam, that will reset. And, oh, it's putting out power right now, see? So normal, and my power's on. So let's pull up the app and see what we're doing. But we'll just go right on the inverter and see what it's pushing out right now. 160, so that was about uh, 300 watts. This one ain't much. Go plug my car in and see what happens. All right, as you can see, we just plugged the car in and it is charging. I think I have it set at 16 amps. Let's see how much is pulling out of each inverter. So I got about, what, 1.5 coming into that one and going out. About the same on that one and about the same on that one. All of them are pretty even right now. And because the arrays aren't even, I'm not sure if it's gonna completely work when I try to run the whole house, but I'm gonna go turn the whole house on and we're gonna see what happens. All right, right now I got my whole house running. No battery connection, just solar coming in. So let's go ahead and pull up the app on the phone and see what we got going in and out. All right, we got 1,874 coming in on one inverter, 1,647 going out, that's what it says. 1,674 coming in on another one, and 1,436 coming on another one. I'm gonna have them start to dry. You know, there must not be anything huge running. I do have my car running at 16 amps, but uh, I'm gonna have them start to dry and let's see what happens. All right, right now we're running at 30, 29%, 28%, and 30%. We'll see once they get this dryer started back. I asked them to start it back. And we tried to start the dryer, and as you can see, knocked out all the power. So I guess it was too much of a load for that one minute. So it didn't seem to work. So with smaller loads, when I was running at 30%, you know, it was already charging an electric car. It was working fine. Tried to pull in that, it didn't. It might be because I didn't have enough power coming in over here. I have a battery powered light, luckily. Might be because I didn't have enough battery power coming in over here on this one inverter because the solar is not as much as these other ones. So, you know, maybe they, they're trying to make them all even. But we'll see if this stuff starts back on its own or, or what. All right, I, I'm gonna have to start all this stuff back and put it back the way it was, I guess. Lithium brand zero. All right, that one reset, let's do this one. That one's reset, let's do this one. One, two, three, brand zero. All right, let's see if the power starts back or if we got too much running. If one of them's trying to kick on, I turned off my car, so now the power keeps kicking back out. All right, battery communication at 40%. Let's see if it starts kicking out some power now. All right, let me go inside and put the stuff back on the grid so I can mess around with this and they don't, so they have some power in there real quick. All right, I got the grid power back on. That's why the rest of my lights are working. And the inverters, let's see what's going on with them. It's probably still showing a fault. Nope, looks like they're working now. They're putting out power because there's power on the panel over here. They did reset on their own. Eventually, I don't know how long it took because I had walked back in the house. 
to turn the house back on the grid because I didn't know how long it would take me to reset all these and get them all set back. But I put them back on basically battery communication and then it had like a little warning up there or waiting or something like that. And then it just restarted on its own. So I think what I'm gonna try to do is put it back on battery since I have most of my house on uh, uh, the grid. I do have my panel here still off grid. So I have my EV charger hooked directly up to this. So what I'm trying to do is set my EV charger up higher. It may just be that I pulled in more than I had solar coming in. Maybe a cloud came through or something like that. Or it might be that the load was too big. So not absolutely sure. So what we'll try to do is I'll just start the EV charger. You know, it's not a huge load to start with because I think it kind of ramps up to what it does. And we'll see if it goes out with that or if it actually works. So it might just be that dryer. It's just an instantaneous load and it, the solar is not fast enough to, to power that. The things were all running at 30%, so it was already running a bunch. It was already charging my car and running lights and refrigerators and all the normal stuff in the house. I'm not sure else, what else was running. So it wasn't maxed out or anything. And I don't know if one of the HVAC units was, was running. If it was running, you know, I'm, I'm not absolutely sure. I didn't have a camera on everything. I had everything running at 30% of their load. So we know it does work some. It might not run big stuff that has a lot of starting amps because of how fast the solar is going to have to change in the power. You need a battery that can instantaneously pull from. But it's just an interesting test to see what happens if you have one of these with no battery. It will definitely run some stuff, especially if it's not like a huge dryer load when it starts. So let's get this set up. I'm going to plug my EV back in and I'll leave the breaker off in here that way. I can just start it back and see what happens. Every time I turn these things off, the only bad thing is it's, it's kicking off the Wi-Fi and everything. So I don't have any communication. So I can't really show you everything that's going in on, on the app because it has a reconnect and restart. But I can tell you what's going on at least. And we got our normal lights back on. You know, it's not kicking out power yet, but the inverter power is back on on each one of them. So we got output power right now on no battery. All of them are set to no battery, so we're going to go ahead and hit that EV again. As you can see, you got 0% output right now. Let's kick on the EV charger and just see what happens with uh, just solar, no battery. Let's see if it starts or if it's going to kick out. 12%, 16 See, because the EV kind of starts up slow, and it looks like it's working, 19%. So it'll charge the EV. That one's at 24% over here. See, this one's at 26%. That one's at 20%. 21, 23, uh, 22. So it seems like the host battery is a little lower than the rest. So it'll go up to 20 some percent starting the EV with a semi slow startup. You know, it get, gets up there pretty fast, but it, it's not instantaneous. It kind of has a natural uh, startup or progression, not a instant go to uh, 3,000 or 3,800 watts or whatever it is. Let's go out there. We'll unplug the EV. We'll reset it so it pulls harder, you know, because we're only doing it temporary. And then we'll see what we get. All right, we got the charger outside set to 24 amps from 16. So we should be able to pull a little more from the inverters. All right, right now at between zero and 1%. Zero percent. Let's hit it. See if it goes out. Hopefully it won't. Should have enough solar coming in. I hope there's no clouds going over right in this second. Oh, it went out. Power went out. So that one was a little too much, a little too high. Or there was some clouds going over. I'm not sure. 100%. Oh, fault. Fault 12. So we have to look that up to see what it is. But it's probably trying to pull too much without having a battery. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it off. I turned the EV charger off. Let's see if this thing kicks back on. So let's look up fault number 12 and just to see what that is. And we'll see if that, that fault resets by itself. So error 12, UPS output short circuit. Check if the load has a short circuit. If not, turn loads off and reset the system. Well, I doubt that's the case, but we'll turn it all off just to reset it. It's probably because it was trying to pull too hard. Turn them all off, turn everything off to reset it and try to start it back. <laughs> Uh, hopefully I haven't messed my stuff up trying to uh, do some testing here, but I mean, the stuff should run without batteries. I mean, you know, it shouldn't short. I doubt it shorted. It's probably just 
it just didn't know what fault to come up with because it didn't have enough power to put out, is my guess. All right, we're gonna turn this first one on and see what happens. I guess we can go ahead and turn the second one on and the third one, might as well. And while that's going on, I'll go ahead and turn the uh, charger for the car down. So I definitely think what it was is probably not enough power coming in because when I had just walked outside, it was pretty cloudy. Now the sun came back out again. I think it had something to do with that. So maybe we can redo all the testing when we get all the power we're supposed to have on that last inverter and when all the power is even maybe it'll work. But we'll go ahead and try it. I turned it down again and we'll see if the charger comes on this time. See if it ramps up and it's working this time. So, you know, I did set it back down. So maybe there wasn't enough solar coming a minute ago or I, or there's too much. The startup was a little too much like it was with the dryer. We can do more testing on this later. Right now, I gotta turn all this stuff back on so I get my house going again. So it will run some on solar, but as you see, if you got clouds coming over or you have an extremely large load, you know, it will kick your stuff out. You know, we saw it running at 30%, so it will run some stuff, but I'm just not sure how much it's gonna run. We have to do more experimenting later when all the sun's coming in and when we got the solar completely set up on that last inverter. It's a lot, like they were all trying to be pretty even. So if that last one's a little short, on that one MPPT, maybe that's why it's kicking out. But if you like this kind of video, this kind of testing with these EG4 6000 XPs, hey, think about hitting that subscribe button. And remember, I got links for this stuff down in the description if you're interested in any of this equipment. And if you like this stuff, hey, go ahead and hit that like button. And thanks for watching.